Hello everyone. Welcome back to Elevate in Spirit. Today, I will share with you another empowering episode of Financial Stewardship. I'm thrilled to be here with you today as we delve deeper into the transformative power of financial stewardship. The Bible says in Romans chapter 2, 11, for God does not show favoritism. It is clear from this text that God is fair. It makes a point of saying that God doesn't favor some people over others based on their wealth, social rank, or nationality. Instead, God decides everyone fairly based on what they've done and how they relate to Him. The purpose of this verse is to tell us that God is fair and just with people. If you believe that, you can start to see God's prosperity in your life. I've already used a lot of scriptures. I can't go over them all again. Now I want to talk about some verses from 2 Corinthians 8-9. Before I start, let me say that 2 Corinthians 8-9 have the most scriptures about money in one place in the whole Bible. Let's start with 2 Corinthians 8-1. Jesus says, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. As part of a broader chapter, Paul is telling the Corinthians to be kind and generous in order to help others, especially the believers in Jerusalem who were having a hard time. The message here is about how generous the churches in Macedonia were, even though they were going through hard times and were poor. The Corinthians should be like these churches and give generously too. It puts a lot of focus on the idea of grace and how it makes Christians generous. While in 2 Corinthians 8-2, Jesus says, In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. This verse talks about how kind the churches in Macedonia were, even though they were going through hard times and were poor. This shows how ready they are to give freely, setting an example for others. The message stresses the idea that even when things are hard, there can be plenty in the form of a kind heart. But there are some things in the second verse that most people don't put together. For example, a great trial of affliction and the abundance of their joy. And when you connect with the Lord and begin to walk with Him, He gives you something that you can't explain. In Psalm 16, 11, God says, You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. This passage is telling us to trust and be sure that God will lead and provide for us. It talks about how to find happiness and fulfillment in God's presence, and how to enjoy eternal pleasures with Him. It's a message of faith, hope, and putting your trust in God to guide you and make your life complete. You can prosper regardless where you are, and so these people had deep poverty, and yet they were able to give, and it says in 2 Corinthians 8.3, For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. The message of this passage is simply about how good it is to give without expecting anything in return, and how important it is to be generous even when things are hard. It reminds Christians to follow the example set by the believers in Macedonia, and give freely and in large amounts. God only wants you to be faithful over what you have to be a steward over what you have, and they even went. They wanted to give more than what they had. It says in 2 Corinthians 8.4, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. The message of this passage is that the believers in Corinthians were willing and sincere in their desire to help people in need, especially other believers. It shows how important kindness, generosity, and unity are in the Christian community and encourages people to help each other when things get hard. And in 2 Corinthians 8.5, Jesus says, And they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then by the will of God also to us. In this verse, they put their commitment to God first which naturally led them to be willing to help others, including Paul and his companions, in their ministry work. This passage shows how a person's actions toward others are affected by how much they love and are committed to God. So you can actually turn your heart toward God by sowing into the ministry and giving to it. When you do that, 
your heart is set free and put into God's things, which is what he said the Corinthians should do. He wanted the Corinthians to do more than just this, though. In 2 Corinthians 8, 6 through 7, Jesus says, So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. The point of this passage is Paul's challenge to the church in Corinth to do better not only in their faith and spiritual gifts, but also in their giving. Paul tells them they should finish the act of grace they started and wants them to do even better in the grace of giving, just like they do in other areas. This shows how important it is for Christians to be generous and share their resources with others as a part of their faith and community. This is the third time in seven verses that the word grace has been related to abundance. In other words, you can't earn it. When you give, you're not buying God's favor. That's faith, and faith releases the grace that God has already given us. In 2 Corinthians 8.8, 8, God says, I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. In this verse, Paul is not giving a direct order. Instead, he is telling the Corinthians to show how much they love each other by being generous, especially when compared to other people who are also giving sincerely. This passage highlights how important it is to give out of love and sincerity, not because you have to or because you feel like you have to. These verses say that this proves the sincerity of your love when you start being faithful in your giving. If you aren't faithful in your giving, then your love isn't sincere. In the next verse, in 2 Corinthians 8-9, God says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. This passage talks about how selfless Jesus Christ was and how ready he was to die. It means that Jesus chose to be poor, even though he was divinely rich and beautiful, so that people could be spiritually rich and saved. He did this while he was on earth and when he died on the cross. People should love each other, be humble, and remember what Jesus did for them. This is what I want you to understand. God became poor and Jesus became poor. He was poor so that you could become rich through him. That's how God wants things to work. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this video inspiring, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more topics like this. Together, let's empower prosperity and transform lives. Until next time, stay blessed and continue walking in financial stewardship from Elevate in Spirit.